صلى الله وسلم على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم The author, رحمه الله تعالى He said in the eighth aspect of the aspect of the days of ignorance الاستدلال على بطلان الشيء بأنه لم يتبعه إلا الضعفاء كقوله نؤمن نؤمن لك واتبعك الأردلون وقوله سبحانه وتعالى أهؤلاء من الله عليهم من بيننا رده الله بقوله أليس الله بأعلم بالشاكرين So the people from the day of the days of ignorance they use this aspect which is they use as an evidence for determining the falsehood of a matter the fact that only the weak ones followed it as is found in Allah's saying they said shall we follow you when the lowliest of the people follow you Surah Al-Shura and he also says relating to their statement is it these poor believers whom Allah has favored from amongst us so Allah refuted this claim saying should not Allah know best those who are grateful Surah Al-An'am Sheikh Salih Fouzan he said this aspect is the opposite of the one before it which was that they would view strength as a sign that one was upon the truth according to this aspect they would view the fact that someone was weak to, to determine that he was not upon the truth if they were if they were upon the truth they would not have become weak this is the judging system of the people of the days of ignorance which they would use to determine truth from falsehood they did not realize that power and weakness lie in the hand of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that a person could be upon the truth even though he is weak and likewise that the person could be upon falsehood even though he is powerful and this is what the people of Nuh said when he called them to Allah they said قالوا أن أؤمن لك واتبعك الأردلون so this is their argument they said shall we believe in you when the lowest of the people follow you Surah Shura ayah 111 meaning the weak ones amongst us if you were upon the truth the strong ones and another <coughs> meaning the weak one amongst us if you were upon the truth the strong ones would have followed you and in another ayah he said and we don't see anyone following you except for the lowest amongst us who followed you without thinking Surah Hud and those who have no sense are the only ones who followed you without comprehending or thinking clearly the same goes for the pagan Arabs during the time of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they would mark the weak ones among the believers such as Bilal, Salman, and Farisa radiallahu anhu and also Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu anhu jami'a as well as his father and mother and they would ridicule the weak companions such that they said we will not sit with you or with those next to you Allah revealed his saying ولا تطرد الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون وجهه ما عليك من حسابهم من شيء وما من حسابك عليهم من شيء فتطردهم فتكون من الظالمين وكذلك فتنا بعضهم ببعض ليقولوا أهؤلاء من الله عليهم 
min baynina. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the meaning of which and do not turn away from those who call unto their, unto their Lord morning and night seeking his face i.e. sincerely you are not accountable for them in anything that they are not and they are not accountable for you in anything that you turn them away for if you do so you would then be from amongst the wrongdoers and similarly we have tested some of them by way of others in order that they may say is it these individuals i.e poor whom allah has favored from amongst us sort and an and his statement is it these individuals whom allah has favored from amongst us refers to the weak ones among the companions and there is no way that they could have preceded us to the truth وقال الذين كفروا للذين آمنوا لو كان خيرا ما سبق ما سبقونا إليه. He said hadith means means Islam being something good. They the poor and weak ones would not have preceded us in accepting it. سورة الأحقاف. And those who are similar to them in this time are those who describe the scholars as not having understanding or comprehension, and that they have limited sight rigidness rigidity and harshness and so on and so forth sheikh muhammad abdul wahab rahimahullah did not write this aspect for the sake of history rather he only wrote about them in order to warn the readers so that they could be aware of this aspect since they are characteristics from the days of ignorance as you have heard my dear respected brothers and sisters, this is from the aspect of the people of Jahiliyyah. And it, so when a prophet and messenger, peace be upon him, he's being followed by those who are downtrodden in the society, those who are weak. So that will prevent them from following the prophet and messenger. And they will look down on the prophet that the particular prophet and messenger they would say we see only those who are weak those who don't use their intellect those who don't comprehend those who, those who don't understand they're very naive they're very foolish those are the ones that follow you so look they use this as a proof that if only the the poor and the needy and the weak ones and the downtrodden one follow you it means you're not upon the truth because if you were upon the truth then those the, the elite from the people and those who, are, who have power and those who have who have strength would have been following you not the weak ones but but they don't understand they don't understand that the measuring stick the measuring stick is not the poor or the rich. The measuring stick is the truth. So whoever follows the truth, whether he is poor or he is rich, then he is upon al-haq. He is upon al-haq. And whoever follows falsehood, whether poor or rich, then he is upon batil, falsehood. But in general this is the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dealing with his creation sunnah allah is the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in majority of the time you find that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he condemns those who are luxurious all the time you find in the quran so you find that those who have been given influence on the life, in most cases, those, they don't submit to the truth. Like for example, Pharaoh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him so much wealth, so much influence. He did not submit to the truth. And those who are with him, 
they were given wealth, strength. They have a lot of money. They have a lot of wealth. But they did not submit to the truth. So you find this also with the big shots and the leaders of Quraysh. Because they had influence, they had strength, they had power and the like. You find that majority of them did not, except few of the leaders. Very few. But the majority of them, they did not. Likewise, the children of Israel, the rabbis, and the leaders, you find that very few believed in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like Abdullah ibn Salam. Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu. So you find that the majority of them, they don't. Because this prevents the people from accepting the truth. Because they look at those who are weak, like Bilal radiallahu anhu, Salman al-Farisi and the like, they say, look, if you are upon the truth, then the elite would have followed you, not the weak and the downtrodden one, because these are the, the weak amongst us. So they did not accept that. They did not accept that. But they don't understand that the measuring stick is not, is not poverty. Measuring stick is not poverty or weakness or meekness or anything like that. The, the measuring stick is the truth. So whoever follows the truth that the that, that Prophet Messenger brought with him, then those are the ones who are honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those are the ones that Allah blesses subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the ones that Allah guides. And those are the best in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, in the kafaru min ahli kitab wal mushrikeen, fi nari jahannam wa khalidina fiha, ulaika hum sharru al-bariya. And then he said, in the ladina amanu wa aminu salihati, ulaika hum khayru al-bariya. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Bayyina, that those who believe, indeed those who believe, disbelief those who disbelieve from the people of the book and the polytheists the mushrikeen those they will be in the hellfire forever may allah protect us from that from that for eternity and then he said those are the worst of the creation the worst of the creation so anyone who does not believe in allah and he does not follow the truth and is arrogant to follow the truth because the downtrodden and the weak have followed it, then he is from the worst of the creation. As Allah said, Those are the worst of the creation. And those who believe and do righteous deeds, he believed by following the Prophet and messengers, and they do a righteous deed, they comply with the commandment of Allah and they stay away from the prohibitions. So those are, those are, in, in Jannah, they will be in Jannah for eternity, and those are the best of the creation. Those are the best of the creation. So it doesn't matter as long as you adhere to the truth, you adhere to it, then you are honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most honorable in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has the most piety, most taqwa. So if the downtrodden, they had the most taqwa, they fear Allah, and they comply with His commandment, then they are the they are the most honorable of the people. While those from the elite, from those who are affluent, they reject the truth, then they are the worst of the creation. So this is barakallahu fikum the measuring stick of the people of Jahiliya and the Sheikh. He mentioned something very important here. He said, and those who are similar to them, similar to those people from the people of Jahiliya, from those uh, who came at the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his prophet messengers, like the time of Nuh alayhi salam and uh, Salih and uh, Hud and other prophet messengers. So the Sheikh, he said, those who are similar to them in this time, talking about our time, are those who describe the scholars as not having understanding or comprehension. 
So they said, the ulama, they don't understand the current affairs. They don't understand the current affairs. Fiqh al they call it Fiqh al The Fiqh of the current situation, of the status, of the, of the status quo. So we ask them, what you mean by Fiqh al So what they mean by that is the political reality and the political affairs of what's going on in the arena. This is what they mean by Fiqh al And this is coming from the Ikhwan and Muflisin. The bankrupt brotherhood, and they are indeed bankrupt as Sheikh Muqbil Rahimahullah. Sheikh Muqbil bin Hadi Wadi used to call them. Al Ikhwan al Muflisin. Now, we tell them, we ask them, and we say, since you claim that you know Fiqh al Waqi and you know the current affairs, you know the reality of the current affairs, the political current affairs, then how much have you accomplished since you know all that? Okay, what have you done in Egypt? Didn't you rule Egypt? Ikhwan Muslimin, they ruled Egypt, Egypt, right? What did they do to Egypt? They ruined Egypt, they destroyed it. Okay, did they uh, rule also in Tunisia? Yes, they destroyed it up till now. So wherever they go, they destroy that particular country, they are actually a total disaster, total chaos. So who knows the, the current affairs now? You are the ulama. Of course, the ulama. They know better than you because you're very foolish. And you are actually the donkeys of the kuffar. They used you in Libya. And you revolted against the ruler. And then what happened? Now, up till now, Libya has not has not settled down. Up till now, and thousands of people have been killed because of your foolishness, and because of your your foolish claim that you know fiqh al waqi. Is this fiqh al waqi? Subhanallah, wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. You ruined Sudan as well. Ikhwan al-Muflisin, they ruined Sudan as well. Wherever they go, in Syria, in Iraq, every place they go to, they will destroy that land. And they claim that they know fiqh al waqi' but the reality, they're the most ignorant of the people. And they are actually the donkeys of the kuffar. Sheikh Muqbir rahimahullah ta'ala used to say, now the donkeys of the kuffar, the kuffar used them, used them to destroy the Muslim land. They are the one that instigate the people against the ruler. And before you know it, the people take on to the streets, right? And they start revolting. And then before you know it, there's bloodshed, right? So thousands of people are killed, innocent lives. Women are raped because of the chaos. And, and shops are looted, looted. And, and buses, buses are, are set ablaze, and the whole, and the whole country, country is in total, total chaos. chaos. This is fiqh al waqi that you're talking about? Is this fiqh al waqi? Wallahi, you are the most ignorant, the most foolish. Countries, they were stable. People, they were working. People who used to work in Libya, they will tell you that at the time of Muammar Gaddafi, the country was stable and the people they used to go from all over the, the arab land to go to work there it was the best medical was free dental was free they were, the, the government give you money from the oil what else do you want because this this ungrateful people and foolish people from the ikhwan and muflisin and may allah give them what they deserve they are the one that created this fitna. And they will be held accountable in front of Allah on the day of the judgment. And then they have the nerve to call our scholars, scholars of dollars. And you have the nerve to say that Sheikh bin Baz and Sheikh al Uthaymeen and other scholars, of the Salafi scholars, all they know is about al Hayd wal Nifas. All they know is about al Hayd, menstrual cycle. When does it start? When does it end? And postpartum, bleeding, and the like. 
that's all they know. They know about the affairs of Tahara. Okay? You claim that you know fiqh al waqi What have you accomplished? Show us your achievement. Show us your achievement. Wallahi, wallahi. Total disaster. Because your manhaj goes against the kitab wa sunnah. If your manhaj was upon al kitab wa sunnah, your manhaj will be fruitful. And that's why Sheikh Muqbil, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that you are the bankrupt brotherhood. And you are indeed. Not a single scholar came from you who was upon al kitab wa sunnah. All you have is Yusuf al Qardawi. Yusuf al Qardawi. Who else do you have? You have the Sufiya with you. You have, you have the people of Al Irja. You have the people of Ashariya. You have Al Khawarij with you. Even some of the Kuffar there with you too. You put your hand in the hand of the Kuffar, and you put your hand in the in the hand of the Shia. You work with the Shia. Sheikh, our Sheikh Al Alama Sheikh Rabi' bin Hadi Al Madkhali. He said, you are like chameleon. You change color. You change color. Because your da'wah is not based on al-kitab wa sunnah. It is based on political affairs. You're politically driven. And of course, when you enter into the politics, you have to compromise. You have to compromise. Because it's based upon what? Not what Allah said, as his messenger said. It's based upon democracy, man-made laws. And this is the reality of these individuals who have the nerve to speak ill about our ulama and say that they don't have the understanding. They don't have the, uh, they, 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 they don't have insight. Who does not have insight? When ulama, they used to tell you, do not revolt, do not do this. Then who has more, more insight now? Who has more, more insight? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide them or to break their back. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على محمد عليه وصحبه وسلم جزاكم الله خيرا يا أستاذ جيمس وكل تايم بارك الله فيكم جزاكم الله خير وياي الله سنت two questions that came through وياي فضل the first question says I'm a Salafi I continuously seek for forgiveness for my sins and thereafter return to my sins again. I'm extremely confused about this. What do you advise me with in this situation? Barakallahu what, feekum. What, what is he confused about? Uh, he, continues, he continuously sins and asks for forgiveness and he goes back to that same sin over again. So what is your advice? Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Thank Allah that you go back and you repent. If it was not for, for, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who aided you, you wouldn't have repented. So the fact that you are repenting, alhamdulillah, this is a good thing in you. So what you need to do, anything that incites you to commit the sin, Get rid of it. I'll give an example. So, if you, if it's going to be something that instigates you to commit the sin by way of watching, a, watching TV or something like that, then you cut it off. You don't watch TV because anything that leads to the sin should be cut off completely. Anything. Sitting with some people, for example, and you know they are backbiters. And if you sit with them, then they're going to incite you to backbite the people. You don't sit with them. You do not sit with them. So you get rid of all the means that leads to the sin. As much as you are able. Then be idnillahi ta'ala. You will leave the sin, and even if you commit the sin, it will be minimal. It would not be uh, constantly. You would not be constantly doing it. So, you do this, Barakallahu Feek. Now. Zakmullah Khairan. Why, yeah. The next question says, Allah grant you goodness. Amin. 
is it permissible for a sister or a woman to accept as her ma, that is a bride price, a brother who is Tanjawa with the deen, and for him to teach her the truth, to be upon the hack and beneficial knowledge as her ma, it is permissible. It's permissible uh, if it is, for example, she, her uh, mahar would be that he will teach her the affairs of the deen. He will teach her Quran, he will teach her the hadith, he will teach her the Salafi manhaj and the like. Then this mahar, alhamdulillah, is good. Jazakumullah. And the next question says, I sometimes have sleepless nights, but I recently discovered that sleep usually comes to me easily whenever I play the recitation of the Quran. So is it permissible for me to make it a habit to listen to the Quran till I sleep whenever I have insomnia? Barakallahu feekum. Okay, if you suffer from insomnia, it could be different reasons. It could be medical, it could also be spiritual. So I don't know which one is it, but at any rate, I will answer according to what you have asked. So if the Quran helps you sleep, Alhamdulillah, there is no problem. You keep doing what you're doing until uh, your sleep gets better. You get, gets better and then you can actually read the Quran without listening to it. Yourself, you read the Quran. For example, you pick up the Mus'haf and you read. You read, uh, you had your dinner, you brush your teeth, you get you getting ready for, for your bed, right? And you read the Quran, if you can read half a juice, whatever you can do, um, until you fall asleep. This is better than listening to it. So reading the Quran yourself will be better. You make al adkar recite the ayat al kursi and the, the three quls, and uh, you know, you make your adkar, and then after that, you read from the mushaf. You read from the mushaf. And until you go to sleep, this is better. Now. The next question says, is wearing flat heels, which do not make any sort of sounds, nor changes the walking of a female permissible? Barakallahu fiqa. Uh, if they are flat and they don't yeah, make any noise, yeah, and they don't attract, uh, uh, you know, the attention of the non-mahram man, then it is permissible to wear them if they are flat. Now, no. <laughs> the next person says, uh, in Nigeria, especially, our public transport system uh, is a problem said that there's a tendency for free mixing between the male and the female even in transport situations mostly you find the female sitting next to the male without his consent without his intention what do you advise in this case as it's difficult for some of us to own our own vehicles even with uber is the same thing as well Barakallahu i advise that the Salafis, they should cooperate with one another upon al birr wa taqwa Probably they can uh, get by a vehicle, uh, like a van, something like that. They come together and uh, each family, they pitch in. And then you have a van. You have a van where you can have uh, the male driving and the, and, the, and the males in the front and the females in the back. And they can put a curtain also, alhamdulillah, can put a curtain. And this is better, you know, when you come together and you all of you pitch in and you buy a van, then this is better than uh, getting in the public transportation where you will be exposed to uh, free mixing and non mahram man and the like. The next question says, is it permissible for one who stopped watching football to still read and listen to radio programs pertaining to football? Barakallahu feekum. Wallahi, I advise you not to follow these, these sports activities because there is no benefit. There is no benefit in it. So it is better for you to occupy with, with yourself with something that will benefit you. Read the Quran, read the, the books of Tawheed, read the, the books of Fiqh, 
read the explanation of hadith from Riyadh Salihin, for example, or Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, by one of the ulama. And if you are not able to do that, then at least do something beneficial. Like, for example, find out about, you know, the benefit of certain herbs, right? Or benefit of black seed. You know, black seed has 100 benefits, health benefits, subhanAllah. So anything that will benefit me and benefit my family, benefit the society, I should busy myself with it. Anything that doesn't, doesn't have any benefit, then you just waste your time and waste your, your quality time in it, and there is no benefit in it. No. Jazakumullah and the next question that says a lady is an, is uh, in an impermissible relationship with a man is it allowed to propose to such a lady knowing that her father has not approved of her relationship with the man Jazakumullah so is it uh, permissible for the man that she is in a relationship with haram relationship to propose right yes because her father is not aware of the situation is not aware of the man First of all, both of them, they have to make tawbah. They have to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that. This is number one. Number two, they have to discontinue talking to each other or chatting or the like. And then if he makes tawbah and he repents and feels guilty, then it is permissible for him to propose uh, uh, to, uh, for, uh, to, uh, to go to her father and propose. Now, no, the next question says, uh, is it permissible to knock a child on his head if he misbehaves? It is not permissible to knock him on the head because this might bring about some damage. And it, it does happen. Some brain damage or something like that. Cause a concoction or something like that in the brain. So do not do that. If you have to discipline the child, you, you don't hit him in the face and you don't hit him in the head. No. And the next question says, in a country like Nigeria, we have the democratic system. Can a Muslim vote in an election? And also, can a Muslim take up a position of a minister in a democratic system like this country of ours, Nigeria? Barakallahu feekum. Since this country is based upon democracy, which is man-made laws, it is not permissible for a Muslim to participate in this system. And also it is not par uh, permissible for the Muslims to vote or elect someone based on democracy, because this is haram. Nah. Inshallah, we take the last question. The question that says, uh, since teenage years, I have been having the condition of passing gas out quite often, and it becomes worsened if I eat some foods like beans, nuts, etc. Although those trigger foods are foods that my doctor has advised me to eat more of due to another health condition of mine. This condition has made it difficult for me to maintain wudu for one salah due to the extent that it might make me miss the early hours of salah. My question is, do I have to repeat my wudu every time I fart? And please kindly note that is it isn't every day that happens this way. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah, amma ba'd. If it's a condition, a medical condition, that there is no cure for it, even though you take medicine, the situation doesn't get control. And it affects your wudu and the like so if it if we have it have if, if it is like very difficult for you to do to make wudu all the time you pass gas then in that case what you do you wait until the time of the salat you wait until the time of the salat and you make wudu right for example you wait for salat at door you make wudu and you pray door if anything comes out during the Salat, your Salat is still valid. And you can, you can pray the Sunnah with that wudu until all the way until Salat al-Asr. Then time of Asr, you make wudu again. Then you can, you can recite Quran, you are in a state of Tahara, even if something comes out. 
until Salat al-Maghrib. Then you make wudu again. And then until Salat al-Isha. Now. Jazakumullah khairan ya Ustaz for the time and for the benefit. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve you upon goodness and sin from our hams. So we miss you next time again. We say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.